Right, part two of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 service videos covering the first service and the 6,000 mile services. And that is part two of four parts, i.e. there's going to be another two videos after this one covering other aspects of the servicing. Now, I say this because last week after doing the oil change video, I was quite literally inundated with comments in the comments section telling me that I'd forgotten to mention about checking and adjusting the chain, telling me that I'd forgotten to do the tappets and that's really important and I shouldn't have left it out and a myriad of other things relating to their conception of how the video should have been presented. I think I did make it quite clear near the beginning of that first video that this video was going to be divided up into four different parts and I suspect it's that age old problem of people skipping through the video missing a lot of the relevant information or cutting off and jumping straight to the comments section two minutes into a video that's 12 minutes long sort of stating that I've missed something out when in actual fact they've just cut off before we've got to that part can I ask people please to be patient I've broken it up into four sections to try and make it easier for people with less experience to sort of digest and assimilate the information into practical terms for them and I quite simply do not have the time to sit there spoon feeding information to individuals that don't have the patience to wait for that information to be presented to them they want that information now now if you want the information from the videos please watch it all the way through and listen to what's been said i'm sorry if that sounds harsh but it needed to be said let's get on with the tappet adjustment once again on facebook especially i've had a lot of comments thrown at me relating to how this procedure should or shouldn't go some of it I agree with, some of it I don't. So for the avoidance of doubt, the procedure that I'm going to show you in this video today is in strict accordance with Royal Enfield's Interceptor 650 service manual. This publication, all 700 and odd pages of it, has been available, readily available, for months. I've had it since well before I got my interceptor. I'm not going to tell you exactly which source to get it from because it is available from various sources. All I will say is that Google is your friend. And if you go to Google and you put in Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 service manual, I can pretty much guarantee that you will be downloading a PDF copy of that manual within 30 seconds tools required to carry out this job you're going to need a reasonably comprehensive socket set although i suspect at a push you could use the onboard toolkit that comes with the bike and that's mainly for disassembly to be able to actually get at your tappets to check them and adjust them now i personally haven't adjusted tappets for probably 25 or 30 years because since that time i've either had bikes with self-adjusting tappets the hydraulic type or the bikes have had those ghastly bucket and shim setups which are notoriously difficult to do at home i'm glad to say that royal enfield has taken a very basic traditional approach to the tappets and you only need some very basic tools to actually carry out that procedure a medium sized flat bladed screwdriver if you have a stubby one a stubby screwdriver that might also come in handy for getting to the tappets that are underneath the actual span of the frame a 10 millimeter ring spanner and a decent feeler gauge now feeler gauges can be quite expensive i have actually found one on amazon that had really good reviews i like it it was only i think between five and seven pounds i can't remember exactly i'll leave a link for that in the video description down below because it tends to be one of those items that people don't have and that's basically it those three items are all you actually need to check and adjust your tappets nothing else now the first thing that you need to do in order to start gaining access to these tappets is remove the fuel tank I would recommend that on the run up to doing this job you empty your tank as much as possible and if you do need to put more fuel in just put a couple of litres in at a time because obviously it's going to be more difficult to remove a full fuel tank than it is one that's almost empty. It is a relatively simple procedure that takes about five minutes. Simply unfasten the two bolts at the rear of the tank that are normally underneath the seat and that will free the tank up so that you can pull it away from the cups that hold it in place. Now I'd recommend having a couple of towels or cloths handy because you're going to need to manipulate and move the tank into various positions to uncouple all the various 
connectors underneath and you don't want to be cracking paintwork against paintwork it's best to put some sort of cushion in between the two now basically there are six connections that need to be undone before you can remove the tank away from the bike itself there are two electrical connectors a small green one for the fuel gauge sender a larger one which manages the fuel injection pump then two quick release fuel connectors and two push fit breather tubes i didn't film this i thought about it but in order to get the right camera angle so that you can clearly see what i'm doing was going to take a mind-boggling amount of time on my own if you've never done it before i would wager it's still going to only take perhaps 10 minutes it's not really a big deal but one thing is for certain that 10 minutes is going to be 10 minutes well spent because if you don't remove it it's going to make the rest of this job so much more difficult and time consuming in fact, I even question whether it's possible to accurately check and adjust your tappets with that in place, even if you move it back. And there is also, of course, that danger of causing damage if you knock the tank off or chip it with a tool. Seriously, it's just not worth the hassle. Take it off and put it somewhere safe. To carry this job out, you're going to need to crank the engine over by hand. So you're going to need to remove both spark plugs. The HT leads are a simple push fit. Just pull them both off and then using a 10 millimeter plug socket, remove both your spark plugs. Now these spark plugs have only been in for 300 miles, so it's unlikely that they will need readjusting. I found mine wear a little bit dark, but I suspect that might be down to the actual valve clearances being very, very tight when I checked them. I did check them again about 20 miles after adjusting the tappets, and they had reverted to a nice sort of golden biscuit brown color, which indicates to me that probably was the problem. Put your plugs to one side and then on top of the span of the frame you will see a sort of a junction box. All the brake hoses from your braking system go into this box and I believe it's actually part of the control system for the ABS. The way this box is fastened in place it is going to stop you getting the rocker box cover off. It's held in place with three allen bolts. Remove the bottom two and simply loosen off the top one and then just put a thin piece of wood or something similar between the frame and the bottom of that box and that will hold it up enough for you to be able to slide the rocker box cover out. While you're at it, check all the banjo connectors on this box and make sure that there's no evidence of leaking or weeping. That is part of the first service. Now, when you've done that, remove the four eight millimeter bolts that hold the rocker box cover on. Make note of which hole which bolt goes into. Because one thing I did notice about these bolts is that on at least one of them, the thread hadn't been cut properly. The first half an inch was fine. After that, it tapered outwards and the threads hadn't been cut properly. So as you take them out, arrange them in a position so that you know which bolt goes where. Because inevitably, that is going to cause some problems with the threads in your cylinder head. And what I am contemplating is perhaps revisiting these at some stage in the future recutting all the threads to make sure that they're okay and then probably use a helicoil kit to make good all the threads in the cylinder head and strengthen them against any future problems it's a shame but it is what it is once you've got those bolts out with a little bit of jiggling about you should easily be able to remove the rocker box cover while you're doing this just be careful of the gasket it should be reusable the last thing you want to do is damage it leave it in place on top of the cylinder head because at one particular point it is held in place with some silicon sealant and we'll move on to that in a second put your rocker box cover over to one side and then turn your attention to the left hand side of your cylinder head you'll notice here that the gasket has a semicircular design which goes into a cutout on the top of the cylinder head this is where having long fingernails is an advantage. Get your fingernails underneath and gently prise it off. The factory has obviously identified that there may be a problem with leaks from this point, so they've reinforced that seal with some silicon sealer. And I would say you will need to have some silicon sealer to make that good again when you put it back. Now, once you've removed this gasket, you will be able to see the end of the camshaft. And the end of the camshaft has some very important markings on it. One marked L for left, 
and one marked R for right. These are your top dead center indicators for each of your cylinders. And in order to manipulate your camshaft, in order to get those markings lined up correctly, ready for checking the tolerances on your tappets, you're going to need to turn the crankshaft. On your left hand side crankcase, there's a large inspection cover with a 14 millimeter hex insert. Remove that and put it to one side, just being careful not to lose or damage the o-ring that seals it. Mine stuck to the side of the crankcase, I left it there until I finished the job, but either way, just be wary of it. Then, using a 17mm socket, engage it onto the end of your crankshaft, and turn the crankshaft anti-clockwise. Never turn it clockwise. If you overshoot your mark, continue all the way around until the marking comes back in line again. Don't try to turn it the opposite way to correct what you've done. Now it doesn't matter which side you start on, but I started on the left side. So you need to align the left mark on the camshaft. And to do this, you simply turn it until it lines up exactly with the top of your cylinder head. When you're happy that you've lined it up accurately, remove your 17 millimeter socket. Now in the manual, Royal Enfield recommend that there's a special tool you can use to lock this in place. They're not available to the public. I've even spoken to two dealers who say they haven't received them yet. And I would argue that as long as you're careful, it's not strictly speaking necessary anyway. Just recheck it periodically whilst you're carrying this task out. Mine didn't move once. There's no reason why it should, but just to be on the safe side. Now once that left mark is lined up, you are now safe to be able to take accurate readings of the clearance for both your inlet tappets and your exhaust tappets. Your inlets should be 0.08 millimeters. Your exhaust should be 0.18 millimeters. Now I found that on all four inlets and the right hand side exhaust, the gaps were half of what they should have been. They were very tight. There was only the left hand exhaust which was within the correct tolerances. Now, loose tappets may affect performance but they won't cause any damage. Tight tappet tolerances can ultimately cause damage. I'm sure these will have been within tolerances when they left the factory, but what happens is as the engine breaks in, the valves are constantly hammering away at the valve seats. And in doing this, they start to compress the metal in the valve seats, and this closes the tolerances up. So here comes the bit that you've all actually been waiting for, the actual tappet adjustment. Now I'm just going to show you this on one tappet because the procedure is the same for all eight tappets. At the top of the tappet adjuster there is a brass locking nut and this needs to be backed off about a quarter of a turn and that will free up your adjuster so you can actually adjust it. Using your flat bladed screwdriver back that adjuster off until you can easily slide the relevant feeler gauge into the gap at the bottom. Keep moving the feeler gauge backwards and forwards and then gently, using very minute adjustments, tighten that adjuster back up again. Now, feeler gauges are called feeler gauges for a reason, because you detect the gap by feel rather than by any other means. If the blade of your feeler gauge slides in and out without any problem, the chances are the gap is too large. If the gap is too small, it will tend to pinch and pull. It will snag the blade and make it difficult to pull in and out. What you're looking for is a sensation through your fingers where you can feel a very slight resistance. The operative way been very slight. You should be able to feel that it's touching both surfaces but you should still be able to move it freely. When you're satisfied that you found the right gap, tighten that lock nut gently back up to where it was before. But whilst you're doing that, keep the adjuster still. Don't allow it to move. Then check your gap again. Now if that gap seems to have slackened off, one of two things have probably happened. One is that while you were adjusting it, you were putting downward pressure with your screwdriver onto the tappet. This will have been closing the gap off and making it feel tighter than it actually is. So when you release the pressure on the tappet, it pops back up and makes the gap bigger. The other thing, and this is a little bit more difficult to get your head round, is that the thread between the lock nut and the adjuster is very slightly sloppy. The manufacturer has to put a certain amount of slop into it, otherwise it will be very hard to screw and unscrew it. So when you tighten the lock nut up, it actually pulls the adjuster up by a fraction of a millimeter, widening the gap. This is one of those jobs where 
if you're like me you've not done it for many many years it takes a little while to get your eye back in and I think it actually took me about 10 minutes to get this first tap it right before I realized what was going on it may be a matter of just adjusting it slightly tight in the hope that when you lock that nut back up it's going to pull it up and the gap will be right it's a suck it and see sort of a situation just take your time and you will get your head around it then after that every tap it will take you about a minute to do now this was the left hand intake tappets the left hand exhaust tappets were fine they were within tolerances the right hand were all tight now when you've finished adjusting one side turn the crankshaft one complete revolution until you're back to the corresponding index mark again and then recheck everything just to make sure that you've got all the distances correct and that nothing has changed it's just good practice Then line the index marker up for the opposite side and repeat the process on the other side. It's exactly the same. If in doubt, check, recheck and check again. This is not rocket science. It is relatively easy to do once you get your head around how it works. Now when you're finished and you're happy everything is as it should be put your gasket back onto your rocker box cover it does engage quite positively and if you've inserted it correctly it shouldn't fall off when you put the rocker box back in place using your fingernails gently clean off any residual silicon sealer from that half moon shape cutout on the left hand side making sure that none of it goes into the engine then using a similar silicon sealer designed for sealing engines, just apply a very slight smear along the surfaces to ensure that that is resealed when you fasten everything down. Maneuver your rocker box cover back into position, ensuring that the seal stays in place exactly as it should be. If it does come adrift, just lift the rocker box cover up and then gently reseat it. It's quite easy, it's not a real hassle and ensure that that semicircular part of the seal goes in place properly over the index aperture and then replace your bolts. Now the manual says that these bolts should be tightened down to 12 newton meters. Bearing in mind the defect I found with one of the bolts, I only tighten them up to 8 newton meters because I do intend going back in there. It's entirely up to you what you do, but as I say, I just tighten them up to 8 newton meters. It's then just a matter of putting the rest of the bike together which is the reverse of taking it apart and that's all your valve clearances done and dusted for another 6,000 miles now I appreciate this is a job that strikes fear into the hearts of most people and I have to admit since it was such a long time since I'd done this job I wasn't particularly looking forward to it but as long as you're careful and you take your time it's not a big job now remember when a dealership gets your bike in to do this service it only has at the very most a day to complete all the work in most cases it's only actually two or three hours because they have other bikes to do as well when you're doing it yourself you can take your time and do it over two or three days do the oil change one day the tap it's the next day the rest of it the day after you are not obliged to stick to a rigid time scale you can do the whole job over several days you don't have to do it all at once as long as this work is carried out within the mileage and time skills stipulated in your manual now I have to say there was an instant noticeable difference in the way the bike performed after adjusting the tappets it's obvious that the valves were restricting things a little bit and there was a notable increase in power now I hadn't noticed it obviously because the, that drop-off had happened gradually over the last hundred miles or so certainly a job well worth doing yourself now the bike is now just coming up to 500 miles obviously these videos were filmed in the past and I'm sort of editing them together as we go along 
in the next video we'll be covering checking the chain cleaning it and lubing it up and the final video will cover the remains of the service schedule i will of course leave a link in the video description down below for the materials that i've used that you may or may not require for doing this job yourself once again thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful if you have please leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will of course be back next week so until then ride safely and i'll see you soon